Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out in the van. This is the newly converted fish locker van, and I'm going to be taking it out for a road trip. My plan is that I'm going to meet a friend of mine right in the north of Scotland, and then we're going to cross across into Yorkshire, cross across, cross across into Yorkshire, do a little bit more fishing there, and then make our way back down here. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's go. You are 13 hours and 27 minutes from your destination. What? And I've made it. This is Bonnie, Scotland. Tom's trying to find a way of holding that fish to make it look like it's a big one. Pretty much. Been trying that dark out all my life. <laughs> Right, we had, um, had a long drive up yesterday and we fished as hard as we could do. We do it have a choking effort. We'd, we'd planned on getting up here for today, to fish today. And the weather yesterday, we thought it's, it's possible, we'll try it. But yeah, by the end of the session, the wind had just got too strong. So I didn't actually get a chance to do much videoing. We had uh, a day on the skate, well, five or six hours fishing for skate. We had one missed run. Tom caught a thornback ray and I just caught cold. And now I've come out for a walk and it's cold. Last night the temperature got down to minus three. And I don't know if you can see up there, the sun has just come up, it's nine o'clock in the morning. And uh, two seconds, I'll get this water off the lens. That was one of the things that I was surprised about. Sunrise down in Cornwall at the moment is around about eight o'clock. Up here it's like nine o'clock. I don't believe in such a short distance that the time could change that much. But yeah, I don't know if you can see it properly, but on the ground and up on those hills up there, we did have a big snowstorm this morning. I woke up early on and uh, looked out the window and yeah, it was, <laughs> it was hammering it down with snow. Our plans might change, but we're going to try and do a little bit of estuary fishing today. I'm just going to have a walk about. When the tide goes down for another couple of hours, we're going to go and try and dig some worm. It is lovely up here, but to tell you what, it is very, very cold. <laughs> I love having a little bit of a walk around. I mean, I've, I've already this morning, I've seen an otter. I've seen uh, what I thought was a goose ander. We've got a little grebe running about around there. I can't show it on the camera because it's only small. But yeah, one of the things that I'm surprised about here, and we'll talk about a little bit more, is there's um, massive tidal anomalies up here. The tidal range that will get down on the south coast of Cornwall, between like a spring tide, high and low, you're talking maybe five and a half metres. On a neap tide, you might be getting two and a half to three. Up here, it's next to nout in some places. In some places around here, there is even no tide. It's a complete tidal anomaly, being that the tide doesn't go in or go out. It's, I think it's crazy. One of the things I like looking at as well is, by having a good look around, you get some idea of the life that's around the place. This is um, like spiralled rack, but not very much in the way of like limpets or winkles. It's just a couple of dead ones. Tell you what, the blood eye marble. <laughs> it's crazy the number of times you go out on beach and you find things like that. I suppose I'm a little bit weird, but I always just kind of 
incredible. What possible life could that have had? That could have been there for 20 years. Everything up here is just like unkered down out of the cold. It's all gorse or short bushes or stunted growth and things. Not hard to see why is it? This is interesting. You see all these whelk shells? There's like 10 of them around in this area. And they've all been... This is an otter. An otter will be diving around in there. I mean the clarity here is fantastic. You can see the bottom. See a real big starfish down there. I did bring my wetsuit. <laughs> just because I thought, just in case. Just in case I find a nice day. I said, I probably won't be getting in it. The water is actually, it's warmer than the air at the moment. But uh, yeah, that'll be an otter. It's swimming about, picking up these whelks and bringing them ashore to eat them. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can hear that curlio. I, I love curlio. They've got a really, really distinctive call. <whistles> ah, they're insane. Like I was pointing out there about the whelks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just well over twenty whelks. That'll all be that otter that I saw earlier. <laughs> well, the weather has changed like flicking a switch. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, we're not in Cornwall anymore. <laughs> we'll wait for this blizzard to finish and we'll see about going and digging some worm. This is what we're after. We are taking it in turns just because it's that cold. <laughs> Give five minutes. Just driving to the mark now. And this is this is one of those things that I tell to folks all the time. Is it's not just the fishing, is being passionate about it, being passionate about the outdoors, it just takes you to some amazing places. Look at this. No, I think that's pretty special. This little spot here is absolutely stunning. Just driving past and I thought I'd pull over and give you a quick look around. I'm just going to drop down as the tides look, dropped away. But this here... This was the first ever bridge over the Atlantic. <laughs> How incredible is that? Look, at low tide, it is pretty much you can walk across. Clarity is fantastic. But the water is very cold. We'll just flick this rock over. There's a ragworm. But these worms underneath here attached to the bottom of this rock. You see how they've created like a, a shell over themselves. Those I think are a type of peanut worm. Incredible. See if I can get that. I don't know if you can see here, just in front of my finger. That is a butterfish. Oh, fast. <laughs> Once it realised it had been spotted, it was fast. Yeah, that was called a butterfish. There is a big brittle star. Oh, look. Oh, 
there's another one attached to the rock. Loads of little tiny sponges, but not much else. But then again, I'm not massively surprised because it is absolutely frigid the water. Right, I've had a route about. Let's carry on going. There is a nice male. I tell it's a male by these claspers on here. A nice male thornback ray. It's not the ray that we're after. But it's nice to see, you can see there by all these masses of thorns, like all the way on its cheeks, all the way all over its tail, while well, they're called a thornback. Even with John's measly arms on it, there's a bend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even my little pipe playing around. This bait actually had only been out there 10 minutes, hadn't it? Oh, easily. God, I tell you what, I'm all puffed out. You're not going to be able to hear me very well because I'm right down near the water and there's quite a bit of swell. But that is what we're after. It's how big he is. Just going pulled up into this into this rock pool here to keep him keep him breathing. But you can see, look, on the sides of his wings, he's got a lot of, these are marine leeches, look. Sea leeches. Each one of these here is a scar from a marine leech. Poor fella. These marks here, there and there, these are actually little hooks and it uses those while breeding but yeah he's also got spa you can tell that this is a male by these claspers here he is a good I'd put him at being I would put him there at being a hundred pound Shows you how big he is. Come on, big lad. Come on, big lad. There we go. That is. I'll have to stand back to be able to get a good picture of it. But that is absolutely mammoth. I'm going to say, easily £200. Got width of its. Just width of its head. In the depth Yeah. Thickness of it, it's the way it's taken to us to take it out and away. But thickness of the tail as well. This is just. Absolutely mammoth. Watch yourself. 
Ci sono un po'. Ciu come, ciu go. Straight down. Well, well done, mate. Right, well, it's uh, it's about half past three, quarter to four in the morning. <laughs> Just got back from a session that was supposed to end at half past ten. And um, yeah, well, it's not even yesterday, is it? It's the day before yesterday. Because we didn't die from the chilli that we ate the other day, we're going to finish it off now. So we're sitting down for our tea, or our breakfast, whatever you want to call it. Depending on how you're going to look at it. We're going to stuff our faces with some hot food, and then we're going to go to bed. Indigestion. Mm -hmm. See you in a bit. Just had a quick drop into Auburn. Just been in the Auburn Inn for something to eat, actually. A really nice haddock and chips. As you can see, it's a lovely sunny day. I'm going to go and stop off some supplies before we head back. Oh yeah, and it's warm. Well, the time has come to leave Scotland. I'm going to be driving for roughly six hours now and we're going to spend a couple of nights in a van and hopefully fish somewhere else. So I'll see you when we get there. Hello, good morning. Welcome back to the fish lock there out on the coast. A balmy Yorkshire coast this morning. To be fair, a couple of balmy Yorkshire men as well. We have to free freeze our fingers off somewhere else. <laughs> it's absolutely bitter this morning. A lovely frosty crisp morning. And we're just on our way down here. A quick spot of fishing and maybe a bit of raving about. The area where we're fishing today is an area under the cliff. Now, some people immediately say that you shouldn't be under there, but by knowing the types of cliff as well. There's no overhang and there's no fresh fall for like areas like that. But to be able to show you around here, we've uh, we've only been here 10 minutes and we've already found a stack of fossils. We've got a big section of ammonite and a few broken pieces of ammonites here. There's a couple of little ones in there. There's an ammonite, you can see it all inside this rock but not only that look at this one here there's a bit of a shell there's some more there there's some more oh wow yeah. there's one there if you lift that top off, probably could. Oh, well done. Give it a wash up in a bit and it'll look nice, eh? That's a lovely one. Different type of rock, in it. Yeah, We've got a lot of this clear, yeah. Absolutely incredible, in it. Like 180 million years old, these things. Loads of big ammonites. There's a load of shells in pyrites. And some jet. That's a good one. Oh. Off the mark with a coddle in there. A lovely conditioned fish. Nice in the daylight. Yeah. This here is a very nice looking and quite large shore rocker. It looks an awful lot like a freshwater species called a burbot. What I'll do is I'll come back here in the summer with James, with James and Hannah, maybe we'll come camping, do some proper fossil hunting. Anyway, tide's starting to move, so are we. Another one of the things that this area of coast is really famous for is the jet, Whitby jet in particular. Whitby's just on the coast a little bit. And every now and again in these little bits of cliff you'll find where someone's found a jet seam and have dug out into it. But this here, I don't know if you can see all the 
the ammonites. Each one of these was a little creature who obviously all died and just got deposited there and then silt's gone over the top. There's one there. Right, well we made it to the top. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick to my boat fishing. <laughs> I do not miss that. Yeah, just catching the last of the lights. It's, oh, it's absolutely stunning. It was really nice for me anyway to, to come back to areas that I used to, used to go to when I was a little kid. So maybe like 20 years ago. I will come back and I will do more fishing. I will do more uh, rummaging about sessions on the rocks. Maybe in the summertime though when it's warmer and I can bring James and Hannah. Thank you very much Tom again. No worries, it's been a pleasure. I'll say thank you twice because Tom carried all the leads back up. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed joining us. All the very best. See you later. Well, I eventually made it home. I arrived home in the early hours of the morning. A fantastic first trip out in the van. Covered the length and the breadth of the UK. From Cornwall to the north of Scotland, then across to the northeast coast into Yorkshire, and then back down home again. A total trip of 1,642 miles covering every type of bit of terrain and weather. We had it down to minus four and I was still comfortable in the van. We did have, there was one or two nights we had, we're like full on snow blizzards. Well, we did, we, we did stay indoors. <laughs> we did get some digs, which gave us a perfect opportunity to be able to get a shower and get some good food in us and stay warm. But the van has been perfect. I am, uh, I'm just gonna come out now and I'm just tidying her up. I'll just go and show you in the back. Right. When I finished carpeting all of the insides, I used a spare bit of the carpet and some plywood to make James a bed. And this is, this all slots apart. James can lay fully out there. I can sleep in the fetal position or like with my legs crossed. And I just use my sleeping bag. Now I've taken my bag of clothes out of here, but there's ample space. This was brilliant, this core box. It kept our bait and my food. Well, the bait frozen, all I had to do was I changed the freezer packs. When we went into the digs, I put the freezer packs back in the freezer. But that was like four days frozen, six days fully cold. My rods fit perfectly up the front and slide under the front seat there. I'll just take you around the back. And that gives you perfect space underneath everything. So yeah, a fantastic first trip out in the van. I'm going to do an awful lot more trips like this, but with James in the summer when it's warmer. I was okay, but it was a bit chilly a couple of nights. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later.